What's up guys, it's Cardi. Today, we're on location. And what are we talking about? Location portraits. I got 10 tips for you to help you make your location portraits, location fashion, location pictures of people better. Come on, let's go. Tip number one, do a walk around your neighborhood. Helmut Newton said, you should be able to find a place to shoot within one block radius each direction of your place. So do a walk around your neighborhood. Take a scan, see what you see. I'm looking for line, shape, form, texture. I'm looking for tone, looking for monochromatic. Take a walk around, see what you see. Tip number two, see this thing right here? It's an iPhone. Take pictures of locations that you want to try on your iPhone. What you're able to do from that is you have visual references of every location that you're thinking about using. Shoot it with your iPhone from a different angle, shoot it from this angle, shoot it from that angle. Guess what else you have? These pictures are geotagged. Open your photos app, open the places, and you'll see pins of all these locations with photo references to boot. Not only that, you can decide, I'm gonna shoot at this spot first, then I'm gonna go to this spot, then I'm gonna go to this spot, then I'm gonna to come to this spot. You can actually map out your locations all by using your iPhone. Tip number three. The sun is in the wrong place nine out of 10 times. What you should be doing is not looking for the sun and where the sun is, but shooting where the sun isn't. Open shade is one of the biggest tips that I can give you for location photography. When you're shooting in harsh sun, the shadows are harsh, your subjects squint. When you're shooting in shade, you get gentle shadows, soft light, non-squinty subjects. Shoot your portraits in open shade. Tip number four, know what type of location that you're looking for in relation to not only tone, matching your subject matter, but also light. Is it the right time of day to shoot that location? Is it in shade or is it in direct sun? And also when you're in that location, try to use it in the three different ways, backlight, side light, and front light. If you're using sun, if you're trying to go against the open shade rule, try to flip it. See what the shot looks like backlit. See what the shot looks like side lit. See what it looks like front lit. Mix it up. a direct sun kind of day, play with shadows. Play with placing your subject half in the light, half out of the light. Mess with where that shadow line falls. Try that with your subject, see what that shit looks like. Also, the flare that happens when you aim into the sun like I'm doing right now, is just bananas. Aim into the sun. Backlighting is so goddamn cinematic, it's why every cinematographer uses it. Try some backlighting. Tip number five. Shoot in conditions that you shouldn't be shooting in. It's raining outside. There's no way you should be going outside and shooting in the rain. It's a goddamn snowstorm. Why would you ever want to go outside and shoot in the snow? It's nighttime. There's no light. It's night. Why would you go shoot at night? Those are the exact times that you should be going out and making photographs. Go out and shoot pictures when other people are too scared, afraid, comfortable. Shoot in conditions that make you uncomfortable 
And that feeling is related in your pictures. I think this is tip number six, but for the love of God, direct your subjects. Many people think of their subjects like a top. Just spin them and let them go. They bounce over here, they bounce over there, they bounce over there. The thing when it comes to shooting subjects, it's all within the nuance. Your photograph exists between here and here. There's a slight nuance. If you have the model turning over there and turning over there and looking up, but like, you need to direct your subject and control their movements so you're getting the kind of shot that you need, the kind of shot that you're looking for. Your subject doesn't know what kind of shot you're looking for, therefore they just do what they did the last shoot. Make it unique, direct your subject, be fun to work with, make yourself memorable. That makes a huge difference when it comes to shooting location pictures. Oh my God, tip number eight. Well, I think it's tip number seven. Tip number seven, shoot through the picture. I shoot 50 to 100 frames for one shot. So for you to think that you can shoot five to 10 pictures and get your picture, you're crazy. Shoot through the picture. When you get your first 11, shoot 50 more. When you get another 11, shoot another 20. You'd be absolutely surprised how up your vibe goes, how up your level goes, if you use your base 11 out of 10 as your marker, as your starting line, as the beginning of your shoot, your first 11, and then jump up from there. That's how you truly take your location photography to the next level. Push through the picture, shoot through the picture. Shoot 100 frames for one frame, man. Think about that, 100 pictures for one picture. Don't show as you go when it comes to your photography and sharing with your subject. I don't share pictures as I shoot them. I only share 11 out of 10. If you're shooting and sharing as you go, you're basically decreasing the confidence in you as a shooter. Because what you're doing, you're basically showing them your practice shots. There's no need to show them your practice shots. Show them your best shot. Show them the one that is an 11 out of 10. Show them the one that is like, holy shit, I can't believe I took that picture. That's the first picture that you show somebody, not the one that you're like, well, what do you think of this? I'm almost there, we're almost there, we're almost there. No, show the picture that you are there. Show the picture when you're like, holy fuck. Show 11 out of 10s. That's what you're using to gain your subject's confidence. If you're showing your sixes out of 10, your five out of tens, all they're doing is like, geez, I might not get anything out of this photo shoot. Show your 11s, not your threes and fours. Tip number nine, keep your locations related if you're trying to shoot a story. If you're shooting a series of images that you want to feel like they go together, shoot them in locations that go together. Shoot them with light that works together. What we need to do is shoot essentially a story. So if you're shooting graffiti as the background of one picture, shoot graffiti as the background of all your pictures. If you're shooting texture as the background of one picture, shoot texture as the background to all your pictures. And let's see what that looks like. We're trying to shoot stories. We're trying to shoot pictures that relate. Maybe you shoot texture in one picture and super busy in the second picture. Then you shoot texture, then busy, then texture and busy. And then together, those two ideas, you can relate them into one story. Use your locations and think about how your spots relate to one another. It's not about just random locations and your locations can be random and unrelated totally if the light links them together. We need to have a link between our pictures when we're shooting the same subject so it looks like it's shot by the same photographer. 
And the last tip, tip 10 for making your location pictures better. My God, don't spend more than 30 minutes in one spot, in one exact spot. Change it up, mix it up. There's so many cool spots 40 feet from where you're standing. Mix it up, move your feet. If you feel like you're getting stale, do you feel like you're running out of ideas? Move, change your idea. Go back to those reference photos of the location that you shot with your iPhone and find another spot. Also, find another spot with that light that matches your other pictures. This has been 10 tips on how you can make your location pictures better.